3D printing is an incredible technology, but there's nothing more frustrating than designing your project and spending hours printing it, only to find that it doesn't fit together. Certain design details and print settings can completely ruin your part accuracy. And if you use 3D printing for prototyping or production, these issues can really come back to bite you. So in this video, I'll walk you through all the things that can ruin print accuracy and how you can fix them. My name is Angus and this is Maker's Muse. Let's get started. Number one, unsupported overhangs and bridges. Bridging is a fantastic technique for avoiding the need for support material, but as the printer runs extrusions over thin air between two points, they will droop down slightly before solidifying. And this can very easily throw out the accuracy of your part in that area. Small bridges are pretty accurate, but larger ones can be really rough. So I recommend ensuring these areas have plenty of clearance in your design to compensate for the loss of accuracy. But what about using support material instead? Well, that takes us to number two, support material itself. You may be tempted to use support material instead of bridging for severe overhangs and other areas of your print, but the interface layer between support material and your print also tends to be fairly rough. You need to hack away at it to get it removed and it can seriously impact part accuracy. For example, you might get bits of support material fusing to the print or some areas may still be unsupported and still droop slightly and overall, it's just a pain to remove. Soluble support material can be a real game changer here, but not everyone has access to a dual material printer. So again, I would give these areas plenty of clearance in your model to avoid any issues during assembly, or personally, my approach is to try to avoid the need for support material altogether through clever part design and print orientation. Number three, the dreaded elephant's foot effect. This bulging at the bottom of your print occurs when the first layer is set way too close to the print bed and the first few layers bunch up against each other, completely ruining the accuracy of this area of the print. Bores will get smaller and the outside edges of a print get really nasty. And this could actually even affect the overall vertical measurement of the part depending on how bad it is because the first few layers weren't spaced correctly in the z-axis. Thankfully, this issue isn't as big of a problem as it used to be with modern 3D printers, but an easy way to mitigate this issue is to add a small chamfer to the underside of your part that will be placed against the print bed and the setting elephant foot compensation does exactly what it says on the tin. It will offset the perimeter of the first layer by a certain amount to compensate for any additional squish which may occur. Number three, bed level compensation. Leveling your print bed is a pain and difficult to get right. So most printers these days use a probe or similar to compensate for a bed that may be slightly off for a perfect first layer. Adjusting the z-axis ever so slightly as it lays down that first few layers to ensure the extrusions are consistent across the whole print area and not too close, not too far. This feature is super handy and it does massively boost print reliability, but it may actually result in inaccurate parts if the bed is way out of skew because it's adjusting the geometry of the part to make the print succeed rather than adjusting the print bed itself to actually be trammed or leveled. Minor adjustments aren't such a big deal, but if you suspect your bed is way off and mesh bed level compensation is actually ruining the accuracy of your prints, you might wanna try manually leveling it to get it as close as possible and then leaving the mesh bed level compensation to adjust for the rest. Number four, part shrinkage, because everything shrinks as it cools. Well, except water. As filament is melted and extruded from the hot end, it will expand and then shrink as it cools. And depending on the filament you're printing with, this shrinkage can be quite significant indeed. Check out this chart for shrinkage percentage rates across various polymers. PLA or polylactic acid has a very low shrinkage rate of well under 1% which actually makes it pretty suitable for dimensionally accurate prints if we don't take its low temperature resistance into consideration. Nylons, on the other hand, have a massive shrinkage rate of up to 3%, and this shrinkage can become a big issue, with the parts warping if layers cool too quickly. Even if the prints are done in a proper temperature-controlled chamber and allowed to cool slowly over a long period of time, they will still change dimensionally and this shrinkage should be accounted for. In fact, with SLS 3D printing, parts are actually pre-adjusted for a non-uniform shrinkage rate in the XY axis 
and the z-axis so that when they cool and shrink they'll be as close as possible to the dimensions required. Sounds like a real pain to me. There is a trick to making high temperature materials more dimensionally stable that many manufacturers do, which is by adding glass or carbon fiber to the blend. This will make the prints more dimensionally stable and stiffer, but don't believe the marketing jargon. It doesn't make them stronger than the original virgin plastic. It just makes it easier to print. My advice, I actually recommend printing in PLA if you can get away with it, or a carbon fiber nylon if you need the temperature resistance and print accuracy. But if you need strong materials that have high shrinkage rates, then expect to be working with pretty loose tolerances or consider throwing some cash at a print done with an industrial level 3D printing process that is designed to hold tighter tolerances in high performance materials, which you can easily do thanks to this video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay offers a huge range of industrial level 3D printing processes with high precision resins, or you can even get parts made from metals like tool steel and titanium. Super cool. And if 3D printing just won't cut it at all, then you can get your parts professionally CNC machine to your specific needs and tolerances by uploading an accompanying measured drawing in a huge range of materials. I'm talking about the perfect press fit for bearings or interlocking components that can't afford any wiggle room. PCBWay has you covered and you can use code PCBWay-MAKERSMUSE10 to get $10 off any order of $30 or more. So what are you waiting for? You can find out more information in the video description below and a big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Number five, the accuracy of horizontal bores sucks. This is simply due to the printing process itself, forming bores layer by layer. What you end up with is like a Minecraft approximation of a hole rather than a nice accurate bore. Now I've actually noticed that slices these days tend to cap off bores with a tiny bridge, which ruins the accuracy of them even further. You can alleviate this by adjusting the top of your bores to have a teardrop shape, which bridges right at the top of the bore when it forms, or you can change your print orientation so the bores run vertically rather than horizontally through the part, and they'll be formed a lot more accurately. Number six, thin wall thicknesses. The size of your nozzle determines the minimum extrusion width your 3D printer is capable of, and generally, the thinnest detail your printer will attempt to resolve is this times two, or a single perimeter tracing around the part. There are, however, a few settings that can allow you to squeeze just a little bit more detail from your machine. One is to enable Arachne as your perimeter generator, which will adjust the extrusion width intelligently depending on the part geometry. For some reason, this is still not enabled on many default profiles, so considering enabling it to get a little more precision on thin walls. But as a last desperate attempt to get a little bit more detail, you can also try enabling detect thin walls. This allows the slicer to run single perimeter extrusions to recreate incredibly thin details, but honestly, the results are always pretty terrible and it only works with the classic perimeter generator. When it comes to designing parts with thin wall details, best practice is to design walls as a multiple of your default extrusion width. So for example, if the extrusion width is 0.45 millimeters, the thinnest wall I'd design my part with would be 0.9 millimeters thick. Again, by enabling Arachne, you can get away with a lot more, but at least two times your extrusion width is good practice in my opinion, to avoid any details mysteriously disappearing for the model because the geometry was just too thin to print. Number seven, internal angles. Imagine trying to draw a sharp internal corner with a fat Sharpie. No matter how careful you are, there's always gonna be a slight internal curve. Well, the same goes for 3D printing. A standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle will create a slight radius on all internal corners. It won't be perfectly sharp. And if you're creating parts that need to fit together, this can cause an interference. An example of this I recently encountered was this D-bore for a tiny combat robot wheel. The shaft of the gear motor has a sharp edged D profile, but when printing the D-bore, the internal sharp corners are slightly rounded over, which ruins the part accuracy and it wouldn't go onto the shaft. Now you could offset all surfaces by a small amount to alleviate this, but that would make the overall fit looser as the top and bottom surfaces are totally fine as is. Instead, what I like to do is add these little rounded details, which compensate for the thickness of the extrusion line and result in a perfect press fit. This practice also has some added benefits because internal sharp corners create stress rises, which is where cracks can easily form and propagate from. So by adding an additional small internal radius, you can both increase the strength of the part as well as the accuracy of the bore. 
And number eight, the 3D printing process itself. All 3D printing processes are additive, which means they create physical models layer by layer through the addition of material. And simply due to the process, they have a hard upper limit when it comes to accuracy. You can't get a perfect smooth surface. It's always gonna be a division of those layers. Honestly, it's quite frankly a marvel of engineering that we can turn plastic noodles into molten goo and squirt it out of a nozzle with enough precision that an FDM 3D print is usable at all. But with these tips, hopefully you can get even more precision out of your 3D printed parts for your projects. Other technologies such as resin printers can resolve higher detail, but they have their own issues as well with part shrinkage and warping during the curing process. No technology is perfect, but if you know what to expect going in, you'll have a much less frustrating experience. If you feel like your 3D prints are taking too long, then check out this video next for my top tips on speeding up your 3D prints. Seriously, some default settings are <laughs> incredibly wasteful and you can save hours with just a few slicer tweaks. I'll catch you guys again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Bye.